Okay, here we go. So, so anyway, so after our you know discussion there, we can see that adding vectors is going to be a big deal. So we better talk about that. So let's say we've got these two vectors here. We've got the blue vector and the red vector, and I'll just put this guy. Here. Let's call the blue one. How about if we call it vector A? Red one. Let's call vector B. Okay. And what we want to do here. is figure out how to add those up. What I want to get out of this, I want to know what is vector A plus vector B equal to. Okay. Any ideas? I'm not gonna, we're not going to mess around with math at this point. We're going to be totally conceptual here for a moment. Just look at vectors in terms of their arrow representation. How would we add these up? If these vectors represented oh, accelerations or velocities, it's a little bit hard to visualize. But it's really easy to visualize if they're displacements. Think about them as displacements. Think about the blue vector literally as the displacement of an ant that starts, let's say hypothetically he starts there, and he's going to travel in that direction that far. Where does he end up? Right there, doesn't he? Right? So that represents his displacement. Let's say that he takes two successive trips. He's going to take trip A, and then he's going to change his mind, and he's going to travel this far in that direction. So if I want to add up those two displacements after taking both of those trips, where would the ant end up? Say it again. No, you're in the right. How, how am I going to put these vectors together? to help me figure out where the ant ends up. OK, so triangle, OK, I like what you're saying. So does that mean like I could put this one right there? No. Not there. Right there? No. no. Right there? No. Oh, yeah, right there. OK, doesn't that make sense? If I do that, Then I end up with, let's call this vector R for resultant. Okay, whenever we do, we combine vectors, the, the, the result of combining all those vectors by addition in this case is called the resultant. Oops, so it's right there, isn't it? Okay, that's important. We always add vectors. Let me write this down. It's so important. We add vectors tip to tail. So the tip of one vector coincides with the tail of the other vector. What if the ant took his trip in opposite order? What if he decided he wanted to do trip B first and then trip A? You're going to get in the same spot? You end up in the same spot? Because if so, that tells us something important. If so, that tells us that we can add vectors in any order. It doesn't matter. Okay. Should we see? So what if we do vector B first? Then we do vector A. Same spot, huh? Okay. So it doesn't matter the order in which we add up vectors. It's irrelevant. They always end up with the same result as whenever you add vectors. Okay. Make sense? Okay. What if, let's go back. Let's say, let's take a slightly different example. What if we do something like this? Okay, let's say we've got uh, an airplane that is flying due south at, oh, let's say at, 
has been doing. I'll do displacements here. South for 500 kilometers, and then it's going to fly east for 300 kilometers. And I want to know the magnitude of its displacement, let's say. Okay, how am I going to do that? So how am I going to draw, this is one vector, isn't it? How do I draw that one? Okay, straight down. How far? Well, we don't, let's just say that represents 500, whatever our scale is, right? How am I going to do that one? Okay, I'm going to go to the left to right for three-fifths of that length. Now, if I want to add these up, where do I have to put the second one? Oh, okay, I've got to go tip to tail, don't I? I've got to go tip to tail, and now they're added up correctly, aren't they? Okay. So the resultant then would just look like this, wouldn't it? Right. What's that? I do Pythagorean theorem then, don't I? Yeah, right, exactly. So there's R, right? Make sense? Okay. And then we could, we could solve this because this is a Pythagorean theorem problem, isn't it? Right? So how would we get that answer? You remember? What's, what's the Pythagorean theorem tell us? A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? So 500 squared plus 300 squared equals R squared. So isn't R just the square root of 500 squared plus 300 squared? Somebody with a calculator, uh, let's say we can take these two. We'll pretend those are measured out to, you know, Clear down to the ones. We got three sig figs. What are we going to get roughly? Somebody with a calculator. 583. Roughly 583. Okay. And our units would be kilometers. Good. Okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Now we could, and later we will do some of this, we could even figure out what that angle is using trig. Right? Now, raise your hand if you've had some trig. I mean, not a lot of people have had a ton of trig, I'm guessing. A little bit, maybe. Some people have had a lot. Some people have had just a little bit. That's all right. Yeah, it is, right. So it would be, but the trig that we're going to do is not that complicated. We're going to do just a little right triangle trig. We're not going to do it today. I mean, we'll, we'll get to it. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe take a, just a brief glance at it today, but very little. Just a little bit of Sokotoa right triangle trig. Everybody's done some of that, I'm sure. So we'll, we'll review that when we need to. Okay, what about this one? What if, um, let's say, okay, let's say that we are, I want a bus. Okay, the bus is traveling in that direction at 25 miles per hour. Okay, I am walking, so that's the, how would we say that? That's the velocity of the bus relative to what? The ground. The ground, let's say, okay. Bus relative to the ground. On the bus, I'm walking forward, rel you know, next thing, talking to my friends on the bus here, and I'm walking by them at a rate of four meters per second, or four miles per hour, sorry. So what's that one relative to? The bus. The bus. So what is my velocity relative to the ground? I'd add them, wouldn't I? Okay, why would I add them? You're right. Think about those vectors, right? We've got a vector representing the velocity of the bus relative to the ground, that direction, 20, right? If I'm walking forward also on the bus, what direction is my vector relative to the bus? 20. Same direction, right? And so when I add up those vectors tip to tail, I do get an answer of 20 plus 4 because... Yeah, tip to tail, they're in the same direction, aren't they? Right? Does that make sense? Okay, how about this one? Now the bus is moving forward at 20 miles an hour. I'm tired of talking to those guys, so I'm going to go back to this end of the bus walking at 4 miles per hour. How fast am I walking relative to the ground? 16, right? Because I've got 20 this way, 4 that way. 
right? Add them tip to tail, and they subtract. So it's really easy to deal with vectors when they're pointing in the same directions, right? Now, we're going to develop a trick which always allows us to add up vectors, or at least pieces of vectors, in straight lines. It makes it a lot easier. It's called adding vectors by components. And that's the great trick. We'll get to that here shortly. Okay, so let's say, what about something like this thing? What if I've got, let's say, uh, okay, I've got a, a, a plane flying through the air, flying north at a velocity of 300 miles per hour, let's say. Okay? It's flying through a, a pretty strong wind, though. There's, a, there's an air current up there that's flying through, and the air current is pushing it southeast at 60 miles per hour. How do I draw that? Okay, so it's going to be southeast. So, so if it's due southeast, we'll assume, then that's going to be at a 45 degree angle, right? So that's south and that's east. So kind of like that. Now, I didn't draw this to scale. <laughs> that's not nearly drawn to scale. That's, that's still probably not even close to being drawn to scale. But what's the problem with this one? It doesn't make a OK, it doesn't make a right triangle, does it? So it's much more complicated to add these up. Now, the book goes through the law of sines and the law of cosines. The law of sines and the law of cosines allow us to calculate the sides of non-right triangles. But they're kind of hard to use. And it's not that useful. I think this is sort of a waste of time. A lot of time, you see this in a lot of physics classes. And there's no point as far as I'm concerned, because we're not going to do it this way. The law of sines and the law of cosines gets very complicated and you might be thinking, if you're a good math student, well, it's not that hard, right? Okay, it might not be, but what if? What if, let's say, that in addition to that, there's some other vector that's being added here. Let's say that, uh, I don't know, aliens have latched onto the plane with a tractor beam, and at the same time, they're going to be pulling the ship, uh, let's say, 10 degrees north of east. And so they're pulling it like that, and they're pulling it at a velocity of 50. Wow, now that starts to get complicated to try to resolve all those vectors geometrically. We can do it, but it's hard. And there's lots of rooms for, for, for making mistakes. So do we have a better strategy? Yeah, we do. Here's our strategy. What if we took each of those vectors and we broke them into pieces? If we broke them into horizontal and vertical pieces, right? All that matters with vectors is that we start and end at the same place, right? Mm -hmm. So isn't it equivalent? Instead of having that one dark blue vector that's traveling at a 45 degree angle, uh, what would it be? It's traveling at 45 degrees south of east, I guess we could say. Something like that. Or east of south would also work. How about if we traded that for one slightly shorter vector due south? and another slightly shorter vector due east. That's OK to do, because look, they end up at the same place. Agreed? Right? What about this one over here? Well, what if we trade that guy for these two vectors? That would be easy to add all those up, wouldn't it? Right? Does that make sense? Look what would happen if we, if we erased those, those uh, well, that's pretty much. <laughs> If we, if we just kind of erased these guys, if we knew what all those numbers were, that would be simple, wouldn't it? Right? And maybe a piece of cake to figure out you know, where, where we are, right? If we add all those things up, starting from here, in fact, if I broke this up into two pieces, whoops. Broke this up into two pieces, one vector there and one vector there. Isn't this horizontal vector really just the combination of that one and that one? Isn't the vertical vector really just the combination of the purple, the light blue, and the pink vertical ones? Right? Because the purple one 
is big and positive, the blue one's a little bit negative. So it takes it back a little oh, bit, and then right. the pink one takes it back up again, yeah. right? No. Keeping in mind the signs, right? Yeah. Now, remember what our sign conventions are. Our sign conventions are that's the positive horizontal direction, that's the positive vertical direction, right? Okay? That would be a slick way to do it. If we adopted an approach like that, would it even matter how many vectors we added up? No. As long as you break each vector up into a horizontal part and a vertical part, all we do is just add up all the horizontal parts to get the overall horizontal part, right? Add up all the vertical components to get the overall vertical component, right? Okay, let's explore that a little bit. Okay, so here's how we can approach that. Well, we're going, we're ahead a little bit. This is further than I thought we were going to be. This is good. Uh, we're not going to get through a ton of this today. We'll get through just a little bit. Okay, so here's the picture. I'm just going to take one out of the book so you can just look at this later. See the same thing. So we'll take something like, well, I'm just going to call it A for now. We'll just do that. So we've got, let's say, that's vector A. Okay, and let's call this angle theta. Okay, and, and we're usually going to want to measure our angles reserved. Uh, relative to the horizontal. Does that make sense? So that's something like 40 degrees, and that would be 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360, right? Okay, if we go backwards, it just makes it negative. All right, so if I want to break this into components, I can do that. This component, which axis is this right here? X axis, and this is the Y axis. So we're going to call this light green vector down here. How does the flat vector? That light green vector. You can't really see that, are you? We'll make it light blue. We'll call this light blue vector down here a sub x because it's the piece of a in the x direction. A good way to think about this would be if I were to shine a flashlight directly down vertically on the x-axis, that would be the shadow cast by the vector. Agreed? Okay. What are we going to call that one, do you suppose? A sub y. Yeah. And that would be the shadow cast, the length of the shadow cast, if we were to shine the light horizontally on the y-axis. It's out here, but it's the same length, isn't it? Right? So how are we going to find those? Here's how we find them. It's really simple. What kind of triangle does this make? Right. It makes a right triangle. If we have a right triangle, Whenever we have a right triangle, and this is the angle theta, we can define a Sokotoa triangle, right? Good old Sokotoa. So if this is the angle, we want to define the opposite, adja opposite side, adjacent, or opposite leg, adjacent leg, and the hypotenuse. Let's start with hypotenuse. Where is the hypotenuse always? Opposite. Always opposite the right angle, right? So the A in this case, good. Uh, where is the opposite side, if that's my angle? Right there. Good. And then this must, adjacent means next to, right? So here's the adjacent leg, okay? So we know from Sokotoa, by the name, it tells us everything we need to know. So, ka, toa, right? What does that tell us? Well, this tells us that the Sine of theta equals the ratio opposite side length divided by hypotenuse side length, right? Okay. What does this tell us? Cosine of angle theta equals the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. And then TOA tells us tangent equals what? Opposite, Opposite over chase. Opposite over chase. Good. Okay. So let's go back <coughs> here then. So if I want to find out the length of A sub X, right? A sub X, A is the magnitude that we know, isn't it? Right? Presumably, we would, we would know that a vector had a certain magnitude in a certain direction, right? So we want to write this in terms of A if we can. What is going to be the Sokotoa relationship that's going to relate A sub X 
and A, if that's our angle. Cosine, right? Because this is going to be adjacent, and that's hypotenuse. Everybody agree? Okay, so we get the equation then. Uh, we get cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Now, when I write, this is really a vector, isn't it? Right? When I write these without vector hats, I'm just talking about magnitudes, aren't I? Right? Okay? So, I want to solve this for a sub x. So, how do I get that a sub x by itself? How do I undo dividing by a? Multiply by a. Good. So, the result is here then, a sub x would equal cosine theta times a. Right? Now, we'd say that is a cosine theta. Okay. That's important. That's always the way that we're going to find the horizontal or x component of a vector. What about the y component? What about the y component? So what's the relationship, SOHCAHTOA, between a sub y and a? Sine. Sine theta equals opposite, which is a sub y, over hypotenuse, which is a. Same trick, multiply both sides by a, right? And so wouldn't you agree then we end up with a sub y equals sine theta times a? Or a sine theta, right? Okay, so we can do this, right? Let's try an example. Let's say we start off with, oh, we had here three. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough. Okay, let's try this real quick. Say we've got a 10-meter displacement vector at a 23-degree angle. And I want to break that into components. We want to find the horizontal component. Let's call it. Good afternoon, Buckaroos. We have a backs. couple of sporting events this afternoon. The girls' soccer team will be playing at BMCC at 4 o'clock. And at Warburg, your volleyball team will be playing the Dallas. JV and freshmen start at 5.15 and varsity at 6.30. The steam is blackout. And don't forget, there's an open house tonight from 4.30 to 6.30. Hope to see you there. Thank you, and go Bucks. Okay. That's just a number, right? That's a number that our calculator gives us. But it's a number. That's all it is, right? If I want to find the vertical component, d sub y, isn't that just 10 sine 23? Just a number, right? A calculator number, but a number. OK? Make sense? No big deal, right? So we'll pick this up on Thursday. I'm going to put a little assignment up. I don't think I'm going to put one up involving components. I, if I, I might. I'm going to put up kind of a short one, though, that just involves vectors. Shouldn't take you long. You'll, you'll finish it tomorrow. You have all day in the lab tomorrow. I'll be gone. But you'll be able to work on stuff as a group. So, uh, pl you know, plunge ahead on that. When we get back, we'll pick this up some more. Yep.